Hey everyone, it's Greg with Spotted Tongue Woodworking, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this vanity almost entirely on the CNC. Obviously, when working with the CNC, you need to start with a design program, and this is Carbide Create, the free software by Carbide 3D, the makers of the Shapeoko CNC machine, the machine that I used. Here you saw that we started with the outline of the project. The outline doesn't matter as much as these next steps do. Um, to determine the width of my face frame from the outside edge of the outline, uh, you create you know, your first rectangle. These rectangles are offset one and one half inches from that outside outline. From there, you need to offset inwards another three eighths of an inch to create the area that will be the beaded inset. Uh, 3 eighths of an inch I found uh, has the best, uh, looks the best with the 1 8 inch round over bit that we will be using. So you create your inch and a half face frame space and then you go inwards from that rectangle, you go in 3 eighths of an inch. And from there, you know, we're gonna be having the doors and the doors will have two and a quarter inch rails and styles that upper drawer will be a little bit smaller because the drawers have better proportions where with like a inch and one eighth uh, rail so that and then that inside that area that will be pocketed out with the mcfly surfacing bit and that will be our shaker style our shaker panel doors and you can't forget this little line because this little line is going to be the line that is the one eighth inch cut for the doors that if you don't if you have that line, you don't make that cut, you won't have two doors, you'll have one odd looking door. So let's get to the nuts and bolts of the machine tool paths that we'll be using. Uh, the first is the pocket tool path. That is the single longest step and we'll just use a surfacing bit. I use the McFly surfacing bit from uh, Carbide 3D. Uh, one quarter inch deep and we'll just pocket out uh, the inside of those shaker doors. From there, we are going to Cut, uh, finish off the finish the corners on um, the surfacing bit does have a large radius so that 1 8 inch bit we're going to run that file twice we'll run that inside to the inside to the left of that pocketed area and then we'll run it no offset along that line and that will cut those corners nice and sharp again it's only going to be a quarter inch deep and you can really fly with that file because you're actually really not taking any material off except for that little bit in the corners so there, so I saw the inside file and then this will be the no offset file again. Um, the, the 1 8 inch bit that I'm using is from Frost CNC. Uh, the cutting length is 7 8 of an inch so you can cut all the way through uh, 3 quarter inch sheet goods. The next file we're going to run is, oh uh, you can see I, I have the wrong section highlighted. We're going to cut out the door, the doors. So it'll be the three, the two doors and the drawer front on the center panel. We're gonna cut all the way through the piece, um, keeping the tabs, uh, the four tabs on each each of the each of the pieces. And the tabs will just help everything from moving, and we'll cut them out later. Um, we'll cut just over three quarters of an inch to make sure that we cut all the way through. On the side panel, we're not actually gonna cut that all the way out. We're going to cut about 5 eighths of an inch into the into the panel and that will create a nice shadow line while also maintaining the integrity of the side panel. From there we're going to cut out that 3 eighths, you have know, that 3 eighths of an inch space and then we'll cut our shoulder um, for the beaded inset. We're only, only going to go in a quarter of an inch again with that 1 eighth inch bit uh, up sheer bit and then finally, we're going to cut the uh, the outline of the vanity. This, there's only one side and one front because it's a corner vanity. Uh, again, I want that one eighth inch round, that one eighth inch bit for those tight inside corners. From there, we move to our third bit, a one eighth inch round over again from Frost CNC. And with that, that's a little tricky because you need to be thinking about how only half of that bit is going to be in contact with. The surface area if this if this makes any sense trying to talk geometrically speaking so with the outside rectangle rectangle we're going to have we have cut our shoulder already with a 1 8 inch up shear bit and then we're going to offset that to the inside so that we are cutting the inside sliver 
and then we, after that path is run, we'll move to the inside of the rectangle where we have to cut the outside of the line to again to, to form a perfect radius around the beaded inset piece. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of a better way to describe it. I didn't end up not getting a good video of that process because the CNC runs while I'm able to do other things like, you know, spend time with my family. So, that, so that's kind of what happened. But here we'll see start to finish what we're going to do. So cut it down, set it on my CNC. What I found with the 4x8 panels on the Shipoko 4x4, the 5, is that a 4x4 panel, you know, interferes with the bit setter. So I just have that pushed up so I can go four feet wide and not have the bit setter interfere uh, with any of the cuts. So we'll pocket out the, sh the panels for those doors and we'll switch out from this McFly bit to the 1 8 inch up shear bit. Um, again, a 7 8 inch cutting, cutting length so we can cut all the way through. So we'll cut out uh, all the doors and all the drawers and then we will cut the shoulders and you can see the beaded inset area and then we cut out the outline. I missed the beaded area, but you can see the beading and you can see a slight rib on the beading where I went a little bit too deep with the beading. I went an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths deep. Um, one eighth inch wasn't deep enough. Three sixteenths was too deep. So I have to go somewhere in between there, but you can see I cut out all the tabs and we're going to just flush trim everything, get those tabs off of there. And you know, the easiest way to clean up the, uh, the beading was just a little bit of sandpaper because this is uh, HDF as opposed to MDF so it machines better, it cuts better, it sands better, it's a lot easier to work with. And there you can see I mitered that edge to get that mitered edge and we'll glue that and clamp that up. We're going to do a 16th round over on all the doors in the drawer front um, because I like the 16th better than a 1 8th, you know, cut uh, the compact hinges. And here you see the sanding, the surf prep sandpaper is my absolute biggest game changer I've made this year for finishing to be able to sand in all these little contours. Uh, the first primer coat on all this, we will do uh, vertical spraying. I don't love vertical spraying because I am not as happy with the finished quality. But what it does allow me to do is it allows me to spray both sides of a project and it cuts down the finishing time in half. So this first coat will do vertical hang and from there we'll move on to flat finishing um, to get the product to lay out better and to get that mirror smooth finish. So again with the Surf Prep Sander we're going to go from Chem Aqua Surfacer from Sherwin Williams to their gallery cabinet paint which I have been using uh, almost exclusively this past year and I love the finish quality of the paint. I love the buttery smooth feel. Uh, the dry time is a little bit longer than I would like but once it dries, it is dry, it is hard, it is not tacky. You can stack it, you can put it places, and that's great. So the face frame's all painted. We're gonna build the cabinet box uh, pre-finished. Uh, I, I prefer pre-finished birch. This is pre-finished maple from my supplier because they currently have a shortage in pre-finished birch. Um, quick and easy joinery, just use the domino. Um, I like the eight millimeter dominoes. Uh, but one thing with the eight millimeters is that you have to make sure you don't cut all the way through on the ends. So dominoes, just nail it real quick. Because it's pre-finished, the glue won't stick, so you don't have to worry about that. And here with the face frame, we're gonna use uh, self-clamping biscuits, uh, lamello biscuits, uh, self-clamping biscuits, not the tensos, but just clamping biscuits. And that's how we're going to attach the face frame to the cabinet box. Maybe we could have done pocket screws, but I like with these biscuits is that they are basically self-aligning. They're, you know, they're in there, it's not gonna go anywhere, they're gonna hold the face frame tight to the cabinet, and you don't have to worry about it slipping or moving with the pocket screws. So we get that all up, you can see they're a black plastic biscuit. They have like little teeth on them that grab and make it difficult to pull out. So that is gonna be what holds it all together while the glue dries. So we'll just test fit that. You can see that beautiful sheen mirror-like finish. And then with the waterfall, that mitered edge, we're gonna biscuit it again, again with these clamping biscuits. Uh, the tricky thing with a size 20 biscuit and a mitered edge is that you have to be extra careful that you're not gonna cut through that mitered edge. So, so with this DeWalt biscuit joiner, you have to move the fence all the way up to make sure you are in the thickest possible point. So now we're just gonna glue everything together. 
um, to hold these biscuits together. You know, I realized this was all pre-finished. Maybe I should have glued it together before I finished it, but then I wouldn't have been able to get that beautiful finish I was looking for. So to clamp it together, we're gonna to use you know, green painter's tape, double-sided tape, and then we're gonna put blocks on there. And with those blocks, we're just gonna use uh, call the Collins miter clamps. I love using them. Oh, whoops. So one miter clamp per tape, not two. And then once that is put together, we can stick the face frame on the box. And the face frame is finished all the way around on um, every single conceivable surface to keep water from get, getting into getting to the HDF but we're still going to glue it um, the biscuits will hold it as long as you know you're not yeah there's no reason why it's not going to hold unless you pick it up and drop it which is not going to happen uh, we get those doors on there you can see the doors are just one sided they're slab doors with the front pocket cut out inset so we'll use an inset uh, compact hinge traditionally I use bloom these were just uh, random leftovers so not what I would traditionally use and from there you can see the false front I just pocket screwed a panel to the back there and then nailed that panel from the back to that and you can see the perfect reveals and the drawer hardware uh, the door the cabinet pulls are just random pulls I had left over and that's it that is the vanity I love the color I love the sheen I love the finish of the gallery I love the precision that I found on the CNC you know, I've done inset cabinetry, I've done face, yeah, I've done beaded inset, and nothing has come close to what I've been able to find with this cabinet. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.